Yes, the good morning, folks. Welcome back. You're still with us on the Sea Morning Show. Now it is Monday, and it's time to get back on the grind. So, Paul, let's mm. start our week by discussing some career related topics so that's quite that's important right. yeah well yeah. no problem for us because we're actually at work but uh <laughs> it, it might be a different issue for many out here in indonesia so with indonesia experiencing a demographic bonus career and employment are crucial for the golden indonesia 2044 target that has been set however the current situation is quite concerning as many of the gen z here in indonesia are currently struggling with their careers that is right paul now so first this talk show of the morning will be discussing how how to improve career readiness for Gen Z's with certified career coach Asmara Dani. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank, Thank you, you so for being much here. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, so, okay, let's just jump straight to it. According to the Indonesian statistics, almost 10 million Gen Z's in Indonesia are currently unemployed. What is the cause of that? Are they transitioning from one job to another, or are they simply just have no interest in working Coming straight up after, uh -huh. yeah, straight after school. Okay, so I think there's a few reasons uh, contributing to the problem. Mm -hmm. I think uh, if we're talking about economic factor, right, uh, there's a few reasons. Um, so when we're talking about economy, there's supply and demand. Yeah. So in terms of demand, there is in sufficient job creation. Mm -hmm. uh, insufficient job creation. And then there's also an impact from like, you know, COVID-19, sure. which disrupted the labor markets. From the supply side, I think there's uh, gaps, like skill gaps, mm. and an issue with the quality of education. So there's actually a lot of graduates having, you know, no practical skills that are uh, match with the available jobs. Okay. Yeah. But this isn't really a, necessarily a new problem. Many fresh graduates, even from years and years ago in different generations, also yeah. suffer the same kind of. Uh, I would say dilemma yep. uh, coming out of college, like, yep. okay, what exactly am I, I going to do? Those days. Some of us had to, I remember I, the, the first job I got had nothing to do with what yeah. I studied, yeah. but it was a job and I needed to work. And I think that was a mentality that was instilled mm. by my parents yeah. um, that, you know, just work first. Mm. And yeah. then eventually you might be able to shift to something you like. And eventually, not only did I shift into what I was educated in, but I reshifted into something that I didn't, I discovered later that was something that I liked. Yeah. It was you something studied that economics or fun. Correct. Yes, right? yeah. So it was yeah. like, yeah. I, so eventually I didn't start off working in banking. I went into banking. Yeah. But now I'm doing this. So I, you know what I mean. Yes. So your career, sure you have shift. these phases yeah. along the way. So many Gen Z often express con, uh, confusion about yeah. choosing a career. Um, how can they overcome this sort of like dilemma or confusion <coughs> that they're faced? Yeah. So I think uh, this is also one of the top uh, questions asked mm. during a career coaching session. Sure. Like, you know, how do I pick my career? Mm -hmm. So I think. Um, to have the awareness to self, uh, to have the self awareness of like where your strengths lie right. is really important. So knowing okay. your strength profiles. Mm. So I think it it has also um, something to do with the education system where, you know, the students are not equipped with critical thinking. So they mm. tend to look outward. They see, especially with the social media and all, they compare themselves to their peers. So they pick a job like looking outwards, okay. like looking other people and you know, uh, so they choose a job uh, for the sake of choosing a job without really understanding their profile and what their career goals are. How can we understand our profile better? Is it just simply uh, seeing at what subjects we did well in school? Yeah. Um, what are some of the other factors that can determine our profile? Yeah, yeah. so actually there's a lot of exercise, like you can go to psychologists and mm. you know, like okay. understanding better about your uh, interests and like your strength. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the, I would say like simple exercise is to do what I call uh, peak experience and valley experience. So what it is, is actually, uh, it's a simple framework where you take an inventory of the kind of tasks that you've done in the past okay. and what are the things that energizes you, uh, which is like peak experience, gives you the peak experience. Yeah. And then valley experience means like, what are the things uh, or what are the tasks that you've done in the past that drains you? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. with that, it gives you indication of how you manage your energy and it's also mm -hmm. an indicator towards your strength. Okay, because if we have good energy towards something, then we're likely going to be better at it. Yeah, right? yeah. If we're talking about sustainable career, sure, right? Makes sense. I think 
Paul, going back to what you mentioned back back in the day, um, you know, when, fresh out of school, you pick a job, you stick to it for a few years, right? Um, even though at the time it may not be what you want to do or what you had in mind of doing in the long run. Yeah. But um, we've seen nowadays that Gen Z is frequently labeled as job hoppers. <laughs> I feel like they have the, um, the, the opportunity to really try all these different things, mm. play, probably stay at one place for three months and yeah. then make a career change. What is the contribution to that? Is that, I mean, from my perspective, I don't think that's sustainable for their career growth, but what do you think? Okay, so I think the label of like job hoppers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it also occurred in millennials when the millennials first entered right. the, worst, mm. the workforce. Um, I mean, I experienced it myself, like yeah. I was also labeled the, the same way because I'm a millennial and people thought that, you know, you're a job hopper, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm. Um, so it's the same thing. I think it, it has something to do with the way they see, uh, they view opportunities because mm. there are a lot of jobs that were not available yep. before, right? Yeah. So there is now a content creator, like an influencer, right. a YouTuber, uh, an AI prompt engineer, yeah. UI UX designer and whatnot, right? So there's plenty of jobs that were not available. And so uh, I think the way the generation these days, like they, the way they see it, if if I move to a place where it's it offers me better opportunity, why not? Okay. Yeah. You know, it has less negative connotation to it. So I think it also encourages them to explore, mm. right? Um, so so I think I think that's the that's the reason. What what exactly entails a better opportunity? Because <clears throat> I think the what, the the uh, phenomenon that we're talking about is. Um, lateral moves let's yeah. say a company offers me a slightly better salary yeah. even though it's the same position mm. i'm likely to take it hey it's just more money yeah there's the immediate benefit but is there a downside to that because when you make lateral moves you're spending less time mm. at each position can that be frowned upon when somebody looks at our cv is that a Correct. bad thing that's hey you keep doing the same job just at all these different companies mm. you're not making at what we call climbing the ladder but you're making yeah. these lateral moves across all these companies. correct correct but i think it's also um you know, Generation Z is, is known for a purpose generation, right? Okay. They're very driven by a purpose. So they find meaning to what they do. Okay. Um, so it's not only about finding a work that fulfills them personally, but they feel like they're contributing something positive to society, mm. right? Um, so regardless of the format of it, like whether they're job hopping from one place to another, if they feel that the work is meaningful and they're proud of it, and then they will do it. Okay, that's a good point. Yeah. I think there's a term for it. I think it's called ikigai. Is that what it is? is? Yeah, yeah I mean, finding it's, the, it's pretty the big sweet days spot days. Uh, yeah. between just the work-life balance. Oh. Yeah, but um, just very curious, what um, steps should Gen Zs take though to have the work-life balance and to be resilient in the in the hustle culture and make their career sustainable? Okay, so I think uh, when it comes to resilience, right, there are a few things to consider. The first is you need to have a clear vision. Mm -hmm. When you have a clear vision of like where you're going, what yeah. your goals are, it's it fuels uh, the journey, right? Like you, you can be uh, more sustainable. Uh, so the first is clear vision and the second is growth mindset. So don't beat yourself up if you fail at something, mm -hmm. you know, learn and move on. And the third is I think uh, support system. So, um, after all, we're like social creatures, right? That we need uh, support. So, surround ourselves with people who uh, are rooting for us. Okay. Yeah. So, um, it might be too early to get a proper reading on this because we are still in the era of Gen Z and getting into their working age, many of them. Yeah. Uh, Gen Alpha is still mm -hmm. too young. So, can focusing too much on a work-life balance, making sure that I'm getting enough for myself and not just focusing too much on work, can we foresee a negative impact uh, this can have on their future in the long run though? I mean, if you're, you know, again, I'm from a previous generation, <laughs> several previous generations. <laughs> so we were always brought up to think like, hey, you have to invest now for your future. Right. And in many cases, it has proven to be correct. Like many mm. people have had fruitful careers and they retired at a proper age and they're yeah. able to support their families. So can doing that to a lesser extent um, affect, can we foresee that affecting them negatively down the road? Mm, mm. You mean like focusing too much on the work-life balance? Yeah, too, like too much of a balance. Like for example, like I don't want to focus too much on work. I have to make sure too that I get Too much life my... rather than work. Yeah, well, not too, but, not too much, but focusing too much on making sure that balance is there. And right, and then you're really not actually focusing, focusing on the work. On right, work. like, yeah. hey, I don't, I'm working too much. I got to back off a little bit. Mm. Can that have an effect on them in, in the future? I think, um, 
So the reason, the reason why they're, they have the inclination towards like, you know, work-life balance is because they, the, the increased awareness of mental health, right? Yes. The increased awareness of mental health, hence why they try to balance their life and that they, that they see a lot in, in the media that they consume, right? Mm -hmm. So in order for them to be balanced, they need to, you know, back off from work a little bit, sure. not work too exactly. much, right? Um, but I feel like because they're also a purpose-driven generation, right? Once they find the work that they find really meaningful, they will devote, the, you know, they will really devote themselves to 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 the job. Okay, that that's, makes sense. Yeah. Mm. yeah, that's that's true. Um, I feel like uh, Gen Zs, they they know how to work smart, not hard. Yeah, that's the word. <laughs> um, some Gen Zs, I feel like also we have seen at ages 20, 21, 22 have actually started organizations have started startups so it's like going back to what you said it's not always um, negative when they're driven they are very driven but for these um, kids or rather like fresh grads who go straight into making their own company and then they would have to lead a series of people a team to manage do you think they're equipped for that I think as long as they have a clear vision of what they want to achieve and they find meaning mm. in their work, uh, they will find a, what do you call that? Like they will find the fuel to, to go there. Um, so I'm not really worried about it. I think it's more about collaboration with other people from you know other generations, the, the collaboration. Mm. Because um, they tend to have a communication that is often misunderstood by others, mm. right? By how they communicate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's. I mean, plenty of sayings like "iya lagi," right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like "iko right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. they could they could ask something out of curiosity, mm. but with older generation that is mis like interpreted as something that is questioning the authority. Correct. Okay. Right? Uh, even though they're just genuinely curious, so I think they need to work on the communication yeah. skill mm. part. I think it goes that goes back to like education, like our educational system back in the day. It certainly did not enforce children to ask questions, and I Correct. think that is embedded critical at a thinking. very young age. Correct. Yes, and it leads to less critical thinking. Um, so the the generation Zs that we're talking about that are balancing work and life and mm. considering their mental health is actually uh, a large part of it. But there's also a part that partially what Karina mentioned, these people who are just so driven, coming out of school, they're already in managerial positions, hence the 30 under 30 list. Now, I've also read that this 30 under 30 list is kind of causing some Gen Zers to over hustle and in mm, fact focus correct. so much on their career because yep. they're trying to achieve so much before 30. In fact, they were thinking about changing that 30 under 30 to so like perhaps something like 40, 40. under 40. <laughs> so they're not like so much Perfect. pressure. Yeah. But what's your thought on that? Mm. Can, can, can on, on the flip side, there are some of these people that are basically so driven to get so much done at a young age. Will they be able to command the respect yeah. of those that are work underneath them uh, and in positions that are employed underneath these managerial positions? And mm. how can they properly um, gauge what is the right like hustle? They, they call it yeah. a hustle, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, what's the right without overdoing it? Okay, so I think first of all, if we talk about hustle culture, right, uh, it has something to do with the digital transformation, the digital world that we live uh, today. Okay. Because mm -hmm. like, for example, uh, pick an industry, uh, retail, right? Yes. Okay. It used to be, uh, for a retail store, um, it used to be, you know, people can only shop until like 9 p.m. and then it right. closes, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, but now, you have to since, physically go. Exactly. Yeah. Now, since e-commerce, it's 24-7, yeah. mm. right? So the demand is like, it's, it's around the clock. It's sped up. It's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And from the employer side, they also ha have, uh, you know, slightly more blurred boundaries to, sure. to work demand, right? right? Of course. And then with the competition in digital world, it becomes, you know, you cannot slack off because, mm -hmm. like, you cannot catch up, right? Uh, yeah. the competition is very tough, so you need to always be working. So I think that also where hustle culture originates from because mm. of the digital transformation and all. That's a very good point. Um, and I think, sorry, what was your question? Uh, basically, if, if somebody, a Gen Zer who is in that particular stage, mm. What would be the right way for them to gauge that, hey, this is actually too much? You mentioned one of them, like perhaps proper working hours, not yeah. to be always 24-7. Um, but what's the proper way to gauge so that they can manage a more successful career so that they're not overdoing it? Mm, mm. So I think uh, for me at least, yeah, the, the way I, I always give um, uh, advice is 
um, take care of your health, right? Your health is is like the the ultimate uh, boundaries, right? Yeah. If you don't sleep enough, mm -hmm. if you keep yeah. drinking coffee, if mm -hmm. you're like not mm -hmm. sleeping, yeah. if you're forcing yourself to you know pull all nighter all the time, mm. then it's it's not healthy. So I think health is the is the boundary. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other other than health, I think like. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it all starts with with health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that uh, like there's been companies now like some. You're right. You brought up e-commerce. It reminds me on this yesterday was Sunday. Mm -hmm. So I messaged um, an e-commerce business that I was interested in ordering something from, and they actually got a reply that said, uh, "Hi, Ka. <laughs> we'll we'll reply to you tomorrow um, because we're hours. we're closed today and we're going to be slow if we're going to reply. It's an automated right. message. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So and I kind of like that because we never used to get that before, right? Yes. There would be always somebody on standby and yeah. I think that's testament to how we realize that yeah. hey too much hustle is not good for us. Yeah, I yeah. That, that's and also the customers, wrong. right? The demand of the customers, they, they're hungry for more. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, yeah. answer immediately, Guilty right? as charged. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boundaries, yeah. exactly. Well, thank you so much for coming thank in this so morning. Thank you so much for having sure. you with us yeah. on um, how Gen Zs can succeed um, in the real world, in the working world. Hey, they're our future. <laughs> thank you. Thank Thanks. you for having me. Thank Again, you. All right, folks, we're now set for a commercial break, but when we return, we'll bring you the world headlines. Stay with us.